In the previous two videos, we investigated the three layers of meaning in Revelation 20 verses 1 through 4. The first layer, which is a comet that will be cast back out into the lower region of outer space and then return at a later time. The second layer, which refers to a stone in the comet's tail that will hit the earth and create a crater and lie in that crater forever, although it will be covered up for a thousand years. And the third layer, which refers to the fallen angels whose authority will be deprived of them for a thousand years when God returns. We went over verse 4 and talked about the three groups of survivors in the last video, the two witnesses who will be killed by the beast but then resurrected by God, and the third group of survivors, which are those who do not worship the beast who do not die but are rescued alive just prior to the asteroid impact. It says, And I saw the thrones and those who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, also whoever had not worshipped the beast or the image, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Also, this word translated as Christ, number 5547, means anointed, and the word translated as reigned, number 936, also means to exercise the highest influence. So this can also be translated, and they lived and exercised the highest influence with the anointed for a thousand years. Then verses 5 and 6 say, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So, the first resurrection is the resurrection of the humans who died during the beast's reign, and it implies that there's also a second resurrection, but it doesn't actually say that. It says, the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were over. And there are at least three possible meanings for this. Either number one, the rest of the dead will be resurrected by God at the end of a thousand years. Or number two, it refers to some type of reincarnation. Or three, it refers to the fallen angels impersonating the dead. In a previous video, we looked at the book of Jude, which indicates that the fallen angels are impersonating the dead in Sodom, which is end-time Babylon the Great, where we live now. It says they are twice dead, which seems to refer to the second death in Revelation 20. Revelation 20 verse 14 tells us that the second death will lie in the lake of fire, which is what occurs on the earth after the asteroid hits. So when it says that the second death will have no power over those who will be resurrected by God, that's because the second death occurs at the asteroid impact, and the resurrection by God occurs after the asteroid impact. And again, Jude indicates that it's certain fallen angels who experience the second death, and that's because these certain angels are impersonating people who have already died. The interesting point in this is that the ancient Egyptian texts also speak about the second death. In this book on Egyptian religions, Siegfried Morenz quotes from this book, which allegedly says of Osiris Kinsman that, quote, he lives after he has died, unquote. So most Egyptian scholars will say that this refers to some silly idea the Egyptians had about life after death. However, there is much in the Egyptian text that these same scholars have failed to adequately explain. For example, the opening of the mouth ritual, which may have involved some type of manipulation or extraction from the brain of the dead person through the roof of their mouth. Revelation 13 tells us the image technology involves a microchip. And in Jude, we're told this image sometimes involves the impersonation of the dead. In other words, they can simulate the appearance of a person and then take over their identity after they've died. This explains not only occurrences that are being reported in our modern times about people who are known to have died being seen again alive by people who knew them, but it also explains why even in Egyptian times, some people were seen alive again 
after they were known to have died. So it's not the actual dead person themselves who is walking around alive again. It's a fallen angel who is impersonating the dead person. That's what it says. That's what these texts are saying, including the Egyptian text. This also explains why the Egyptians and even other later cultures considered these zombies, so to speak, as being evil. This article right here on Egyptian religion explains that those who die the second death are considered evil. And here again, it says it is Osiris who kills them. So nobody really knows with absolute certainty what the Egyptians were actually talking about. All anyone can do is try to understand because there's no one alive now that spoke that language. And I personally believe they misunderstood a lot of it. I think in general, our modern scientists underestimate the Egyptians and their understanding of what was happening around them. Also, we know that we are under the deception now. So, of course, the truth about the Egyptian knowledge would not be handed to us by the beast, especially if it's revealing one of the deceptions of the beast. So what they say about the mythology, I don't think they understand what was being said, but I think the truth is still in there. Also notice that in the alleged mythology of of ancient Egypt concerning the second death, there's a demon with a crocodile head involved. And there are literally people in modern times describing experiences where they have seen a human being transform into a large crocodile or serpent-like creature. That is what the image technology is. Genesis 3 literally tells us it is the image of a serpent. In other words, people who have allegedly seen quote-unquote reptilians are actually seeing a shift in the image technology. And the serpent image is just that, another image. Not the real appearance, but another fake image. That's what these texts say. And apparently they were using this image technology in the ancient times of Egypt. Revelation 13 says the significant event in the end time regarding this image is that they were able to cause the image to speak in our time. In other words, they were able to synchronize the movements of the mouth during speech to the movements of the image. So it sounds like they were able to look like certain people after they died in ancient times, but they were not able to impersonate this speech at that time. They were not able to perfect the speech synchronization until recent times. So this crocodile demon in the ancient Egyptian texts sounds very much like the image of the serpent in the biblical text. And the second death in the Egyptian text is the killing of the evil zombies by Osiris. In Revelation 20.14, John is giving us more insight by telling us that the second death will occur at the asteroid impact. It will lie in the lake of fire. And we'll cover that in a minute. But next, let's just go through verses 7 through 10, which say, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so first, notice it's not talking about the dragon here. It's specifically talking about Satan, which is the adversary. The dragon represents many things. Satan only represents one thing. In other words, there's no chance that it's talking about the comet here. It is specifically talking about the fallen angels. 
Second, notice the word translated as after, number 2532, also means indeed. And the word translated as expired, number 5055, also means executed. So it says, indeed, when the thousand years are executed. Then the word translated as loosed, number 3089, also means deprived of authority. The word translated as out of, number 1537, also means from. The word translated as his, number 846, also means its. And the word translated as prison, number 5438, also means guard or watch. So it says, Indeed, when the thousand years are executed, Satan shall be deprived of authority from its watch or guard. So this is not necessarily saying that this is going to happen after the thousand years. The execution of the thousand years can also refer to the beginning, which makes sense because right after that it refers to the Battle of Armageddon, which does happen just prior to the start of the thousand year reign. It says Satan will go out to deceive the nations, Gog and Magog, and gather them to battle, and fire and brimstone rain down on them. So again, the fire and brimstone is the asteroid impact. So Jesus said there's nothing that has ever happened before like it, and there's nothing that will ever happen like it again. So that has to refer to the time just prior to the thousand years. It's the start of the thousand years. The execution of the thousand years. Then in verse 10, the word devil we know means false accuser, and the word translated as cast in number 906 also means lie or lay, and the word translated as into number 1519 also means in. So it's saying, and the false accuser that deceived them laid in the lake of fire and brimstone. So earlier it told us that the false accuser will lay in the bottomless pit which we're told is opened by the asteroid. So it represents, on one level, the crater left on the Earth. So this is telling us that the lake of fire is in the bottomless pit. In other words, the lake of fire is caused by the asteroid impact. It says this is also where the beast and false prophet will lie. And notice this word translated as false prophet number 1578, is most often translated in the Bible as false prophets, plural. So it's not just talking about one false prophet, it's talking about all the false prophets, which are actually non-humans. We've discussed this before. They are wolves in sheep's clothing, literally non-humans dressed up like humans. And then this phrase, ever and ever corresponds to word number 165, which means age or period of time. So it's saying, and the false accuser that deceived them laid in the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night for a period of time. This is extremely important because in Revelation 9 verse 5, it specifically says the torment will last for five months. The torment in Revelation 9 occurs when the asteroid hits, and that is the bottomless pit, which is the lake of fire. So when it says they lie in the lake of fire, being tormented for a period of time, it would appear that it refers to the torment in the bottomless pit that lasts for five months, specifically in Revelation 9. So. Again, that would be another example of the true God's mercy, because it's not saying they will be tormented forever, only five months. And some people may consider that cruel, but five months is nothing compared to the lifelong torment that they have inflicted on millions of humans. So, I mean, it's not for me to say. I'm just telling you what the text says. Five months. That is the length of the torment. That's what it says. Also, one more point about verse 8 where it talks about Gog and Magog. That battle is also mentioned in Ezekiel 39 verse 11. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day 
that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, by the way, Israel is the whole earth, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Hammon Gog. So, by the way, the phrase the noses of the passengers corresponds to one word, number 5674, which means passengers. So I'm not sure why the word noses was added, but it's not there. I, I don't see it in there. But notice this word translated as Valley of Ham and Gog, number 1996, means the name to be given to a valley of graves. And the valley is mentioned over and over in the text. And in the New Testament, for example, in Matthew 5.22, this word translated as hell, number 1067, also means the Valley of Hinnom. So hell, on one level, refers to a valley. And in the Old Testament, one of the words translated as hell literally means pit. So hell in the Bible is literally a pit pit, and a valley, a valley of graves or a valley of dry bones. Since we know the pit is the crater left by the asteroid impact and the pit is a valley, that means the asteroid is going to slide into the earth, leaving a long crater, not a round crater, but a long valley. And there's one more interesting point about this valley. Actually, there's a lot of interesting points. But for now, notice that we are, again, given a clue about where this valley will be in Ezekiel 31. They always say the valley is in Israel or in Jerusalem. But what people don't realize is that Israel represents the whole earth and Jerusalem represents the humans on the earth. But Ezekiel 31 talks about a special tree. And you'll notice the connection to Daniel chapter 4. So it's talking to the Pharaoh of Egypt, and the Lord asks who the Pharaoh is like. And then it says, a cedar of high stature. So in other words, the king of Egypt is like a tree. It says, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, all the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, etc., etc. And then as you read on, you'll see the connection to Daniel chapter 4, which says this giant tree will be cut down. The interesting part is that in Daniel 4, the tree represents the king of Babylon. And in Ezekiel 31, it represents the king of Egypt. Then when we get to Revelation, we are told Babylon is Egypt. Revelation 17 tells us Babylon is the great city, and Revelation 11 tells us the great city is also Sodom and Egypt. This means the king of Egypt is the king of Babylon in the end time, and more specifically, it refers to the eighth king, the United Nations. But the giant tree, it says in Daniel 4, will be cut down and a stump will be left in a field of grass. And the only giant stump sitting in a field of grass that I'm aware of exists in the United States, Devil's Tower in Wyoming. So both Daniel 4 and Ezekiel 31 seem to be referring to the United States. And notice Ezekiel 31 verses 16 and 17 say, I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit. So again, this word translated as hell literally means pit, and it's confirming that yes, hell is the pit. It's the bottomless pit. In other words, it's the crater that the asteroid will leave in the earth. There may be more than one crater because the Bible indicates there may be at least two meteorites, but at least one of them, it seems certain, will hit the United States, and the other one will hit the Atlantic Ocean. So in Revelation 20 verse 10, the beast, which Revelation 17 tells us is the eighth king, will lie in the pit 
along with the false prophets, and they will be tormented for a period of time, which Revelation 9 indicates as five months. So let's stop there for this week, and we'll finish this chapter next week. For more information about the timeline of the end in the Bible, you can watch the playlist linked here. Thank you so much to those who are making this research possible. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.